Hi, my name is Ali Shersava and in this video we are going to talk about how you measure the current loop of a PFC power stage. Your PFC uh, power stage has got two loops, a voltage loop and a current loop. Uh, the voltage loop is quite slow and is relatively easy to measure. The current loop, on the other hand, is actually quite difficult to measure. The current loop is quite fast, anything, let's say, between 5 to uh, 10 kilohertz crossover frequency. And the issue that we have here is that the input to the boost uh, power stage, this is a uh, average current mode continuous conduction mode boost, uh, is a rectified sine wave. Now you cannot measure the loop whilst the input is changing like so mainly because it's changing the reference of the error amplifier for the current. So you're going to have to freeze this in time and then make your measurement. There are and you will need to do it at different points in the waveform in order to get a family of curves. But unfortunately if you actually freeze this and by that I mean instead of putting a sine wave in, you put a DC value in, uh, the power that is being drawn has to be matched by the voltage level so that you still get a correct measurement. The one point that we know in DC will give us exactly the same as AC is that RMS value of the input voltage. So usually when I measure, first thing that I do, instead of messing around with the circuit and trying to break things and uh, break the circuit in order to set the reference to something, what I do is I actually fix the input voltage at the rated RMS value of the voltage. In our case, that will be 230 volts. So instead of putting this sine wave in, I actually power up my boost PFC with a DC of 230 volts, which would have been the RMS value. I know that because of the way everything is calculated, at 230 volts, the output will be somewhere around 400 volts DC and will deliver the, exactly the right amount of power that I'm supposed to be delivering. Uh, for example, for simplicity, let's say we had a 100 watt power supply uh, PFC stage and I fixed the input voltage at 230 volts RMS at full load, 400 volts, I expect to get 100 watts. That means that my current loop is frozen effectively in time at this particular operating point but it means that I can now measure the loop and, and work out the stability of my loop at this point. How do I do it? Well, almost all of them have got some form of current sense. So I've got a current sense resistor over here. And the mass majority of the chip also have got something called a multiplier inside. Depending on the nomenclature, uh, you have got <coughs> M out, multiplier output. So, uh, the whole circuit will look something like this. Uh, here you have got typically a small resistor, let's say 250 milliohms. Here you've got the return current, I return flowing. And here you have calculated this value to match the voltage across here to the same sort of voltage level as the one over here. So depending on the data sheet, you know exactly how to calculate this value. Let's say this one is about 4 Kilo ohms. So a, a small current times 4 kilo ohms will give you a voltage across this which is the same sort of magnitude as a large current times a, a small resistor. And then this becomes a, a standard compensator, your current error amplifier which tries to minimize the error to make sure that these voltages match. Okay, where do I inject my signal? I inject it here. So my injection resistor goes there. If that is around 4 kilo ohms, you make sure that this is small enough not to have an impact on all the calculations. By the way, if that is 4 kilo ohms, usually there is a balancing resistor over here, identical size, 4 kilo ohms, to make sure that the bias currents are similar or that they're nearly the same. Then I put my injection transformer and then I use body 100 in order to inject the signal and I measure my loop. So having put my injection resistor and uh, my uh, um, injection transformer, then I put the channel one of the uh, body 100 at this point here. I put channel two here. 
and I use differential probes and I measure with respect to this point here. And that way we will get the overall loop. So um, let us um, have a look at the test setup. Again, uh, please be aware that we're dealing with high voltages and high currents and they're dangerous. So please uh, do take care and uh, follow the safety regulations. Uh, in order to be able to do this, we have, as uh, with the previous video, I have reduced the voltage to 23 volts. So even though this is a proper power stage uh, for a PFC, I have actually reduced all the voltages to fool it to think that it's working on 230 volts, but in fact, I've got a transformer and it's working from 23 volts. So we can operate uh, with safe voltages and we use these balls extensively in our workshops in order to run many labs. Um, here is the sense resistor, as you can see. Uh, it's feeding the load and uh, I am injecting with an injection transformer, as I showed in the earlier diagram, across a sense resistor that I have soldered in, on my board over here. And then again, for safety reasons, we are using uh, um, safety probes. This goes to the Bode 100. Now, let's have a look at what it looks like on the computer. So here we are looking at Breacher PLD, which uh, designs uh, PFC control loops, a voltage loop, current loop in both digital and analog domains. And here I have designed a loop with a crossover frequency of 15 kilohertz and a phase margin of 50 degrees. You can see the shape of the gain and the phase, and you can see the way it should look in real life. So you can get this a straight roll off, you cross over around 15 kilohertz, the phase starts to rise, and you get your, your phase margin that you need. Uh, if you look at the input voltages, you see that here actually we're using 85 volts to 265. That is an usual universal voltage. Uh, but as I said earlier on, for safety in the class, when we run the workshops, we use the 23 volt version of this. So we have divided everything by a factor of 10 and made the hardware so that it operates under safe voltages. Now, let's go and see what we are measuring in real life. This is the uh, Bode 100 measuring the uh, power stage, the current loop of our uh, PFC. And you can see that it's almost a perfect match with the simulation of uh, PLD up to around this point. Uh, the reason it, the simulation fails with respect to the, the real life uh, is that my switching frequency for this particular PFC a circuit is 100 kilohertz and you're approaching Nyquist frequency so basically from from here onwards uh, uh, the uh, approximation starts to fail and then if you look at it we've got a crossover frequency of around 15 kilohertz just like design and a phase margin of 49 degrees again just like we designed um, of course this is uh, at 230 volts or in our case at 23 volts uh, and that is because we had to lock the AC voltage to freeze it so we, we are putting in 23 volts DC now if you want to make sure that it's stable under the entire input voltage waveform you're going to have to change the input voltage at different levels and make several measurements at 20 volts 30 volts higher up to let's say uh, 230 times root 2 which is the peak of the voltage and then you make the measurement again and again and again and then you get a family of curves to give you 100% confidence that uh, it's going to be stable under all conditions.